provide us both, but what does it mean to you to be playing alongside together each other? You've been through the journey uh, for so long and to have this milestone together. Yeah, super exciting. Um, I think it makes a day extra special that I get to share it with my good mate Luke. Um, obviously been through a lot together, uh, got drafted the same year back in 2008, um, shared a lot of success early days and um, yeah, developed into great friends off the field as well. So to share the day together makes it extra special. Yeah, oh, it's it's awesome the way it's panned out to be able to play it together. Um, you probably look at the start of the year and we had like big boy McAvoy as well who uh, was due to play his 250. So you sort of start to pencil a few rounds in that it might fall on. So then for it to work out where we, we're playing it together is is just awesome. And yeah, the journey we've been on together has been unreal. Um, just yeah, absolute lifelong memories that we won't forget. Brucey, what I suppose um, have you looked about recently and Shields' sort of resilience, obviously being tested a little bit coming in and out of the side. What, what do you respect about him in that, in that respect? Yeah, well, I guess the respect from oh, pretty much day one he got to the footy club, the way he trains and prepares uh, has always been there. And then he was so reliable throughout his career and, and still is. So, um, yeah, tested this year, but the way he's been able to respond, uh, his ability to go back to Box Hill and, and have a huge impact down there, whether that's not only with the footy, but from a leadership point of view as well. Uh, there's no, re yeah, that's the reason why he's getting back up into the senior side and, and getting his chances. So um, still a really valuable player for us. And um, as I said, he's just so reliable. So, you know, every time you run out with him, that he's going to get the job done. Have you enjoyed that challenge? Obviously, you'd rather be consistently in the side, but there's a little bit of a reignite the fire and go, okay, I've got to knuckle down and work my way back in, which you have. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt it's, it's been a challenge. I want to be playing AFL footy every week, but completely understand where the footy club's at. Um, we need to inject some youth into the side, and um, luckily enough, we drafted a few guys that are ready to go, and they play a similar position to me. So um, I've really enjoyed getting down to Box Hill and working with a few of the other younger guys that we've got down there. and. Um, you know, just happy to play whatever role it can be to, you know, to drive us to that next premiership. So if that's, you know, being the Medi sub some weeks and, you know, guiding these guys on the bench or going down to Box Hill and working with a few of your other young guys that are, that are playing down there, I'm more than happy to do that. So, um, yeah, as you said, it's been a bit of a challenge because I want to play AFL footy every week, but um, there's plenty of other ways to help out. Just, I mean, your, I guess your reflections on Luke as well. He said some nice things over there. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the nice words. <laughs> um, remember Punk coming in. As a uh, yeah, skinny, skinny kid, he used to wear the helmet as a junior from Tamora, country New South Wales, and um, he's always been a pretty flashy player. Um, you know, he's got a, a great sidestep, had a rugby background, and um, the thing I love about him most is he's just you know he's so down to earth, so humble. Um, he's probably one of the best, or he is the best, in my opinion, the best small forward of the last decade. So um, he's super clutch in big moments. We've seen that throughout this year. Um, you know, if there's a goal needed to be kicked in the last quarter when the game's on the balance, he's normally the guy that steps up and kicks it. So, um, yeah, super reliable over a long period of time and can do the, the remarkable stuff as well. Thank you. So, so Liam just alluded to it as well. With a young team where you've sort of got to play a leadership role or maybe a time to step away and let some of these other guys um, maybe shine. How, yeah. how have you found it, I guess, navigating it with these young players and ups and downs? Oh, it's been, it's been awesome from my point of view. As you said, you, you step into a, a bit more of a leadership role and... Uh, the, the biggest thing that I take away is the little moments where they do step up and uh, we obviously had like someone like a Dylan Moore who I've been working closely with over the, over the last few years and Sam, Sammy Butler now uh, who, who gets a chance. So the amount of work that we put in out here or up there in watching vision and in, on the computers and things like that, when they then step up and, and start to really perform is when I probably take the most, um, oh, I'm the most proud and, um, and so so happy for them to be able to reap the rewards of their hard work. So that's probably the, where I'm at, and I'll continue to, to do that until I until I finish at this footy club. Last week's performance uh, is that one of those things that is just going to happen with a young group? Do you think? And how is how have you sort of addressed it this week? Yeah, I guess that inconsistency is is frustrating. Uh, you look at the Brisbane performance and our ability to just fight and get numbers to contest and, and win um, and then sort of overrun him in the last quarter was, was, was pretty impressive versus what you get on the weekend where um, yeah you, you just get that inconsistency of whether it's contest a ball, um, tackles, there's so many key stats in the game that we lost um, so when you, when you do that then you, you just don't give yourself a chance to be able to be competitive and I think the difference between the top and the bottom in AFL footy is not very much so if you're off slightly then um, then you sort of yeah you're gonna get um, yeah a loss like that handed to you. So that's probably the most frustrating thing. We looked at some vision during the week. Uh, we've got to be better in a number of areas, and, and Collingwood would be a challenge this weekend. Luke, what does getting Jack Gunston do? I mean, it's 
it's also in your milestone game, you have some great memories, but just in terms of his on-field presence in, in a game like this. Yeah, you, you spoke about the leadership before, and I think Jack brings uh, a lot of that. Uh, he's so level-headed and, and calm under pressure. He makes really good decisions, not only with the ball, but just the way he sees the game. He, he makes really strong decisions in terms of helping coaches and things like that, and the field that we have out in the on the ground. Uh, it's handy that he looks for me a little bit as well <laughs> in the forward line, so we've got a nice little uh, connection down there that, uh, yeah, it's hard. It's, it's just built over a long period of time, so that's why it's um, become so strong. But, yeah, looking forward to having Jack back. Is that a bit earlier than you guys thought? <laughs> yeah, well, I think originally he was... Uh, a bit longer, but he's obviously got to get through uh, a main train today, and uh, and then yeah, hopefully he can run out with us on the weekend, which will be nice. Well, you guys probably on a hiding for nothing in the rough last week, so with Ned and the extended squad might be to return. Is, that, is this really a structured thing as well? Does that help in that department? Yeah, it has. Uh, it was a bit tough last week um, coming up against Big Witsy. I think Connor Nash, Cozzy, and, and Frosty all had to go in there, and um, they were giving up probably 20 kilos and a fair bit of height as well. So they battled on gamely last week, but it does make it pretty tough for the mids underneath him. So, um, yeah, Reeves is in a similar boat to Jags and Gunners. You've got to get through training today. It's a bit of a, a different week with a, a main session later on in the week with the Sunday game. So, um, yeah, hopefully all those boys get through, and especially Ned, um, you know, it would add a lot to the side if he came in. You've touched on your thoughts of his career, but have you got any favourite memories of Brucey, whether it be on or off the field over the past few years? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's plenty, off the, there's plenty off the field. I've been lucky enough to share a uh, couple of... Um, you probably saw some photos on uh, yeah. Hawthorne's Instagram uh, yeah. during the week. There was a, a couple of cracking photos yeah. of a, a young Liam and Luke. So yeah, he's a bit of a luck box. He's renowned <laughs> for being, you know, one of the lucky guys. So he could drive to Chatty peak, peak time around Christmas, and he'll just find the park right out the front. <laughs> Whatever he touches seems to to turn to gold, and that happens on the footy field as well. He always <laughs> seems to pop up in the right spot. But um, yeah, plenty of on field. I think 2014. Grand final, kicking that goal um, off the pack against Sydney, um, just trademark Bruce. So, um, yeah, plenty of good memories and hopefully a few more to come.